good day, this 252nd day, Meaningful Moments, 365 days. Sugar, sugar, sugar. So I realized the last couple of days when I've been sharing this detox, which is today detox four day, detox day four, um, that I hadn't really brought up sugar, that I had mentioned about us making changes or in my home, eliminating things like gluten and dairy and reducing meat to very small amounts. Of course, always very clean and organic, that kind of thing. Um, but I didn't touch base with sugar, which I believe has actually been probably one of the biggest changes. So, you know, even if we're aware, like, oh, we find sugar is the thing that, you know, we should eliminate or stay away from, I'm giving this meaningful moment extra reason to stay in your mind because of the white and the white. If it's white, you probably want to eliminate it. Our food sources in terms of real food that's nutritious isn't going to be white. There really isn't anything, you know, in nature, Mother Earth, that comes to us in that color. And that's a good indication that it's artificial in some way, manufactured in some way. And so, you know, that was a big change in terms of, you know, having that awareness and staying away from a lot of those kinds of sugars. But then what about other things that convert into sugar? Um, you know, if you have any boxed item and most bottled items, canned items, etc., cetera, um, you're going to find things like, hold on a second, gotta change that. back. <laughs> um, something else is playing there for a minute. But uh, just wanting to share, you know, if you have those kinds of uh, food items in your home, in your pantry, those kinds of things, they probably contain some sugar. In fact, when you actually start trying to get rid of sugar, you realize how we are inundated with sugar, like everywhere. So let's say you figure that out. And then you say, okay, well, I'm going to still do my best to you know, eliminate other kinds of sugars, then you got to think about the conversion of things like our carbs and starchy foods that convert into sugar, whether it's potatoes um, or different kinds of pastas. And, you know, if you have that occasional beer or wine or whatever it is that you're drinking, how that converts, um, how dairy, lactose converts. So, you know, just so many different foods that convert into sugar in our body. And as that's accumulated in our body, we're building that candida in our body, you know, and it's just not doing things to keep a healthy gut flora. So that was the meaningful moment that came to me today when I realized that even I, who have been aware, you know, had to start now looking at root vegetables and how they convert into sugar and, you know, what fruits have that higher uh, sugar index that I want to try to avoid. And again, you know, a lot of these things, they come into our head. We, you know, have the knowledge, the scientific research and all that, and they still don't connect. Nothing is going to connect until it really connects with you inside. So the meaningful moment today was about what is it that, you know, sugar, sugar, sugar has meant for me in my life and the kinds of cravings that I sometimes get. And I do believe that some of us, you know, we run with different kinds of temperaments and, you know, my studies in Waldorf education alluded to some of that. And I always thought, you know, with a little bit of melancholic nature, a little bit of sweetness might be good. And for years, I've sweetened with other types of natural sweeteners like agave or maybe a little bit of honey or I baked with honey, those kinds of things. And I'm, you know, reassessing a bunch of different things because of the clarity that has been coming. And so with that sugar, 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 there inevitably was some clouding that went on in my thinking and definitely associated with triggering emotional kinds of reactions, um, definitely giving us a little bit more imbalance in terms of really being centered in ourselves. The only way you get to figure that out is if you actually try eliminating sugar, getting past that Mm, turmoil or that turbulence or that um, 
you know, resistance and whatever else might you might experience as you start to do that because what happens is that candida is going to be screaming and it's going to make you think that you can't live without it. And, you know, for a lot of people, they'll just straight up say, I can't give that up. You know, and I named a bunch of different things right now. And you might be thinking like, well, then what do I eat? Exactly. Which then made me start thinking like, hey, you know, what is this? Our culture, our society, Western diets, our civilization, you know, in general. And I thought about the kids and how we treat them. We give them a treat by giving them sugar. Just so many ways that we have to like rethink things. And that's okay because we're in that process. But offering that up to you today, if you're on that journey, you're wanting to you know, start trying to eliminate sugar or reassess how you're going to use sugar in your life and what and the ways are going to benefit you, how they can affect you to be clearer in all the work that you're doing, all your healing, your well-being, your state of consciousness, body, mind, and soul. So for you to that, for you today with that on sugar, 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 and finding all the other ways you can sweeten your life. Aho, friends.